the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. One of the most known historical countries out there for its landmass, saving Vienna and the Austrians from the Ottomans with their winged hussars, and well... <coughs> so why don't we revive the Commonwealth, but this time, why don't we throw some phalangism into the mix? So today we will be forming the Polish Empire, reviving the Commonwealth spirit and creating our Phalangist International to support our brothers across the globe, avenge the patricians of Poland. Of course, to do all of that, we will need to start as Poland and, get, and to get the achievement, no more patricians, we will need Germany and Russia to be in our faction with us or just to not exist. And while it will be easy just ally uh, allying one and defeating the other, nah, instead we will be eliminating both. While the strongest top options in the Polish focus tree are in the monarchist paths, this time we will be looking for a more nationalist approach, let's just say. But before we can forge a new path for Poland, we must unite our efforts with other nationalist groups, as united we stand and divided we fall. The German Civil War triggered and of course Mr. von Mackensen won, meaning that either the Kaiser will be returning or the Weimar Republic will be reborn! Spoiler alert, nobody wanted the Weimar Republic back in this game. With enough uh, unified support for our policies, we must consolidate both of the proposed uh, constitutions as we have enough problems with the peasants trying to revolt. To that end, we must enlist some paramilitarists, as we will need the extra firepower we want our takeover to succeed. But the weird things are starting to happen, as Japan has decided to go democratic for a change, and basically shoot itself in the foot. But that doesn't matter right now, as with enough support from the general population and from the government itself, we can finally sideline the Saratonationists, leading them to be vulnerable for a coup. And so, to secure our dominance, it's time to march into Warsaw and make a show of strength and take direct control. With a proper government for the Polish people that will serve the Polish people by the Polish people, we shall reinstate our claim to the whole of Silesia as rightful Polish clay that was stolen so long ago. But before we can start our national reclamation and vengeance against the Germans and the Russians, we must first support our fallen his brothers abroad in their struggle against capitalism and communism. But while we were planning the whole riot in Warsaw, the Soviets thought it would be a good idea to have their own civil war. So that already is going to be a great advantage for our future war with the Soviets. And also it doesn't help that Stalin thought it was a good idea to take over Manchuria while dealing with, uh, dealing with the civil war. Well, either way, it's time to help out nationalist Spain and go and win the war for them as let's just say that the Carlist revol with the Carlists revolting and the Portuguese intervening in the side of the Republicans, nationalists l uh, lost a lot of their momentum. But with the whole world exploding into chaos, it's the perfect time to demand the whole of Lithuania. As the whole world uh, continues to delve in deeper into madness, now Italy has decided that they want to commit seppuku as well, as now they actually have decided to declare war on Yugoslavia, bring them into a war with France, the UK and Germany. Yeah, good one there Italy. Lithuania saw that there was no point in avoiding the inevitable and has reincorporated itself into Poland. Soon we will reclaim the legacy of the old great commonwealth. Oh, and to no one's surprise, Italy is dead and now is the UK's bitch. With the national spirit you get from the support the global phalanges on focus, you can actually send ex three extra divisions, so my total troop count in Spain was now f five divisions and I would really need them if I wanted the national Spain to survive seeing their current situation. I helped out the nationalists push southwards, making some encirclements. Republican Spain, while they were winning the civil war, they were doing so barely. And as such, after some breakthroughs, we pushed hard into the south, recovering some territory for the nationalists in the process.
Uh, remember that I mentioned Portugal before? Well, they joined Greece in their quest to commit seppuku as well, as now they as well, the Greek communists decided to launch a coup against Yugoslavia, the same Yugoslavia who, that joined Germany early on. What is with this AI sometimes? While I was making gains for the nationalists in the south, the republicans were pushing towards Barcelona fast. So I had to redeploy and fix that before this became a disaster. Looking at the troop, um, uh, troop accounts of the nationalists, I decided to send a lot of equipment so they could rebuild their army. At this point I was spending so much well, manpower and equipment into Spain for nothing really. I just really needed to destroy the Soviets and the Germans, why do I do this sometimes? But it was quite unlike for Germany to stay quiet, and they actually changed that policy by demanding the whole of Memo. And the reality was that it was not feasible for me to deal with the Germans right now, so I had to give out the Memo. After fixing the mess of the northern breakthrough, I refocused, uh, refocused on the south, killing Portuguese troops in the process. I rushed towards Madrid, and soon the Republicans capitulated. As such, now it was a war between Portugal, the anarchists, and the nationalists. And while I would show you more the gameplay of the Spanish Civil War, as I had to thin the anarchist lines by myself, not only would this make the video too long, but also I already showed too much of the Spanish Civil War for a video about Poland. At some point Portugal capitulated and became a puppet of the nationalists, remember this detail as it will be important later on. Eventually, almost already being like 1940, the Spanish war ended in my favor as now I would have a nice falling his ally. At this point the Germans offered us a deal to give us guarantees against the Soviets if we gave, uh, gave them Danzig or Gdansk and Poznan. But who would be fearful of the Soviets while they're still in the middle of their civil war with almost no industry thanks to them preparing for their internal conflict? If anything, the real threat is you, Germany, so I refuse their shitty deal. And now I could form my Cool Kids Club alliance with nationalist Spain since I made them win their conflict. But another interesting event happened as the French wanted to form some sort of pact with the Soviets and us, but the thing is, this pact was meant for the revolt tag, i.e. the SSR, Bukharin's faction, and not the Soviets under Stalin. And this, this would mean I well, technically could not fight the Soviets in the future. This actually proved an opportunity since Bukharin's faction was losing pretty hard the civil war. So this meant this would leave the Soviets right open for an invasion once Stalin won, or so I thought. But things can never be this simple, can they? Yeah, at some point the Manchurians declared war on the Allies, or the Allies declared war on Manchuria, on Chukwu, I don't know what happened. The thing, the thing is, is that since they were now at war with the Allies, the Allies decided to let the Soviets join. Meaning this would complicate my immediate plan to attack the Soviets just after they finished their civil war. But this was not the only interesting message since now the Germans wanted to join in on the fun and declared war on the UK. As such, while we lost an opportunity in the East, another one opened in the West. And so we march west and we shall reclaim Silesia for the Polish nation. Since the Germans were focused on the Western Front, they were ill-prepared for our entry into the conflict. As such, we were able to secure East Prussia and marched towards Berlin pretty easily. All the meanwhile, the Soviets entered their civil war and at that point I had to pray they would leave the Allies after the war with the Germans, as of course, well, they joined the war. Anyway, we redraw the front lines and soon we would be in Berlin.
But this was way too easy. And indeed, it was too easy until this point as Austria-Hungary finally reformed and since it was formed by Austria, they immediately became at war with everyone, so now we need to focus on the other enemy, but either way, this only slowed the Germany's demise as they were st still stretched pretty thin at this point. We secured the north and the Rhine, and so after the fall of Stuttgart, they capitulated, leaving Austria and Hungary as the only major remaining in the conflict. And you know, having to fight practically everyone in Europe, and it's just Austria-Hungary, is not really doable per se, so yeah, they basically died shortly afterwards. During the peace deal, I got a really favorable one as I managed to snatch all of East Prussia and got Germany and Austria-Hungary as my puppets. Only some minor border war happened with Czechoslovakia being released and in the Balkans, well, but uh, that was to be expected really after all. I waited to see if the Soviets would leave the Allies, but surprise, surprise, they were still at war with Manchukuo. And later, since China joined the Allies and Comi China declared war on China, that meant that it dragged everyone in, in the Allies to the conflict with Comi China. What? What the fuck? But things just got weirder. So what happened was that Macau got released or something happened with them, I don't know how. The, po the point is that they became the Republic of China. So Portugal declared war, but the thing is that that Portugal became Iberia and went communist jet again even though they were supposed to be a puppet of Spain, who was the phalangist. And not only that, they even started another civil war, so you got regular Portugal, which was not a puppet of Spain, in a province in Portugal, but you had Portugal, which, which, which became Iberia, in the Azores or something, or some of those islands. This is just a clusterfuck, like, this really got out of hand. These are confusing times. <laughs> So after that ordeal, I decided to send my mountaineers to deal with the commie Chinese, and after they were defeated, I waited to see if the Soviets would leave the Allies so I could strike them down. And sure enough, they did leave after the war was over, so it was time to go all in. But for the second time, Portugal slash Iberia was doing some weird shit, as they formed a faction with the Soviets, but the problem is, is that since they were supposed to be a Spanish puppet, that meant that they would be, uh, well, they would be in my faction as Spain is in the following his international. So now, Portugal slash Iberia, well, was now in both sides of the war, even though they can't really join anyone since they're supposed to be a Spanish puppet, like, uh, what, the, what is happening? Paradox, please fix your shit. Anyway, the invasion was going incredibly well, as not only the, were the Soviets exhausted from all the wars, but also lost half of their troops to the Civil War, so this was really just a cakewalk.
And after waiting all game long, I had enough compliance in Lithuania to form the National Commonwealth. But hey, even if we're phalanges, the Romanian brothers still want an alliance! And how to refuse them when they want to be our friends? Poland and Romania, best friends. The invasion of the USSR continued, but as we reached the Caucasus, things slowed down as there are no supplies depots in the region. So it became a bloody nightmare logistically wise. No wonder the Germans had a difficult time in real life here. But the time was here to celebrate our glorious occasion and claim the great legacy of the Commonwealth. Now let us send the remnants of the Soviets and finally have a revenge against the perfidious Russians. The Russians did not have almost any troops as we didn't even manage to kill like a million Russians. So that shows you how bad they were in this situation. But after pushing all the way to the Urals, they surrendered. And now it was time for my favorite hobby. Balkanizing the hell out of countries. So let's do that to Russia's revenge. And with that, the last Polish achievement was unlocked. And even Siberia formed out of the Far East that I released. So now Russia was divided with Central Asia being a singular state, a middle Siberian state, the Far East, and finally Russia, which still existed in the Urals, while I decided to, to take Western Russia. Oh, and for fun, I decided to release the Volga Germans, as I was told in a stream that they were actually a thing. So, here they are. All the objectives have been achieved, but we still needed to fix those borders, especially once in the Balkans. So let's that fix that border guard with the magic of toolpack. Five minutes later. So the redrawn borders look like this. I decided to dissolve Austria-Hungary and took uh, some of the Slovakian and Czech lands, as this was still a commonwealth of peoples, you know. I fixed some stuff in Greece and Africa, but decided to leave Yugoslavia as it is, as, you know, it's always a mess down there, so... I decided to expand the Volga, Ger the Volga Germans' territories, and that was it, really. Uh, and so, for our great Phalanges International, finally stretched from Iberia all the way to Siberia. But we were still missing some members, since this is supposed to be an international, you know. Oh, and I almost forgot, I actually fixed the civil war thingy that, uh, that was happening with Portugal. But I decided to leave Iberia, slash Portugal, itself, uh, itself like how they were, uh, as a weird thing, because I just think it was funny. And it makes sense for good role-playing reasons uh, to believe that they were like a rebellious puppet that can be controlled since they are in the middle of the source or something like that. Also, they had started influencing some South American nations, so I would not be able to turn, well, m most of the countries, like Argentina and Brazil, fascist, uh, even if I wanted to, because the decision to actually start promoting fascism there cost 100 political power each time just to get a mere 70 days national spirit. But we can still invade nations that are already fascist, so let's just do that to complete our Cool Kids Club Alliance. And you know, now that's a real cool kids club alliance if, I, if you ask me. And that's the end of the video for today, I really hope you enjoyed the video. This was Effectus. You are dismissed, soldier!